Uh, um, morning all from here in Whitney. Um, Mike, could I just ask that I have um, permission to record? I've tried a couple of times um, and it hasn't let me um, or send me the file afterwards or, or however we're going to work it. Um, thank you and thank you for the big up. Yeah, um, my name's Stefan, I'm from Whitney. I'm the author of um, Business Networking for Dummies and a couple of other networking books as well. Um, endorsed by people such as Ivan Meisner um, and so on. And I, I talk about networking for a living. This is what I actually do. In the last year, um, I've done something like 50 virtual networking events um, all around the world. Um, I'm really proud of that, what the last year has enabled us to do. I've got um, my biggest gig ever, which I'm very proud of, so I'm gonna show off a little bit. Um, I'm. I've done, it's been recorded, a speaking gig for a company called Namecheap. Um, they're the world's second largest domain name registry. And a presentation just like this will go out to 2 million people next week. Um, really weird. I, I did the presentation from here at, at home, um, from my red chair. Um, but I got really nervous about it. Just the, the numbers, even though it was just me in this room, as I always am, I got nervous about doing it just for the numbers. And, and people get nervous about networking. My very first networking experience was, was here in, in Whitney, um, where the, the Oxfordshire legend, Jamie McIntyre, was my introduction to networking. And nobody told me at my very first networking event, which was Whitney Big Breakfast sometime in 2005, Nobody told me about the 60 second introduction. If you've never been networking before, and I'm, I'm not gonna ask everyone to do one now, but no one had told me that I was gonna have to do that. So my very first introduction to networking was being the new boy in the room, not having any idea however, how everything worked, wondering why this really nice guy called Jamie had empty seats either side of him, because no other bugger wanted to sit next to him. That's what I found out later. Um, because when the 60 second round started, which no one had told me would exist, you know, Jamie stood up and I'm not gonna do it for the sake of everyone's ears, but Jamie's introduction was, hi, I'm Jamie McIntyre. I'm the... And he did that for two minutes, that volume. And, and everyone else looked at me as Jamie sat down and said, go on, follow that then. That was my first introduction to networking. Since then, I've done over 1,500 networking events um, all, all, all around Europe, which is, has been very flattering. Um, I've spoken at about 400 events over the last few years, and that's sort of important. And me having written the books is, is sort of important, but what's more important is that the clients I've won from networking, including here in Oxfordshire, um, include, let's start with the Oxfordshire business, Okema. Um, Okema are my biggest client. They turn over just under a billion euro a year based in Carterton. Um, and I won that business through, through Facebook, actually. That's, that's where they first heard of me. Um, I work with BT and Lloyds Bank and um, Namecheap and Utility Warehouse. I do their networking training for them all because of networking events that, that I attended. Never ever let anyone tell you that big businesses don't go networking, they do. It's just that you probably need to approach it ever so slightly differently to, to how you've been told in the past. By the way, I'm gonna speak for 15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, 20 minutes, something like that. But then let's have some questions. If you've got any networking questions at all, please pop them in the, the chat. It's that way, um, on my screen at least. Please pop them in the chat and I'll, I'll answer them as, as we go through. Every big opportunity starts with a little conversation. What I've learned over the years, why I turn up to, to, to events like this, is that I never know what conversations I'm gonna start at events like this and where they're gonna to lead to in future. I'm just gonna talk about the way that, that I do networking, which sort of all goes around in a circle. Um, if I look down there, that's where my laptop screen is, sort of goes around in a circle so you can see that. Um, but this is how I, I handle networking. This is how I make it work for me. And, and what I really hope is that you can put some of these tips into action today um, as you meet the other people and, and maybe I'll meet some of you tonight down in Abingdon as well, bring umbrellas, um, but I'm planning to, to come down there tonight. What I 
hated about networking at first was walking into a, a room full of people who I didn't know. Um, I, I guess one of the biggest reasons for that is for, for the first, what, 15 years of my life, 16 years of my life, you know, I'd been told and, and you'd been told by your parents, don't talk to, and I hope you're all saying strangers. Um, when I do that from stage, everyone says strangers back at me. I know that it's worked. It's a bit weird doing it virtually, but you got told all your life, don't talk to strangers. And then if you're in business for yourself or if you're representing someone else's business and, and you're out there, what's the first thing that you have to do? I, I had to walk into Whitney Big Breakfast and walk into this room full of people who I didn't know and work out ways of starting the conversation. So the way that I start conversations these days is, is wholly different. I put a load of effort into what I do on LinkedIn, what I do on Instagram, what I do on Facebook, so that if I'm connecting with people constantly, if I'm making sure that I look for who's part of the conversation about business, about business in Oxfordshire today, whatever that happens to be, connect with those people and look to bring value to the relationships, guess what? There isn't a networking room, certainly in the UK, that I've walked, do into, it walked into in the last 10 years or so that someone hasn't known me because I've already connected with them in advance. I've already made sure that I've put value into the relationship in advance by the content that I put out there. Um, I know that there's a, a presentation about content later on. Um, I believe from mem memory, it's the wonderful Mary doing that later on. So, so please do listen to her because the content that you put out there is incredibly important. Here's, here's a couple of things, right? A couple of things that have happened to me in the last couple of days. Um, Kathy Dunbabin puts a load of content on LinkedIn and Facebook and so on. So I know what Kathy's up to. I know that if I bump into her today, I'll be up to date on, on what she's doing. It won't be a cold conversation. Mike has been putting a load of content about this event Plus, he's been telling us about his new services. I, I spotted it. I hope you did as well. How brilliant is that? That when I bump into Mike later on today, I'm already a little bit aware of his new services. And actually, there's a conversation for, for him and I to have about that. Mike doesn't know that's coming, but I, I've, I've been watching what you're doing. Those conversations aren't cold. I put something on Instagram yesterday and Ben liked it. Just a little thing. But Ben liked it and that made me, made me think, oh, Ben, I wonder how he is. I'm sure I'll see him tomorrow and so on and so forth. By being part of the conversation before you get to networking events means that you don't ever have to walk into a room full of people that you don't know. So the advice that I'm giving you right now, get stuck into the conversation online. LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook to some extent are where a lot of that's happening now but please make sure you're part of it. It means that there are so many faces in the room. I just had a quick skim through the Zoom um, before I, I came here. Um, Jay Unwin, morning Jay, um, who's a bit of an interloper from um, one of the counties far southwest of us, um, but I know Jay's doing some work with, with Oxlep, um, and him and I got into a conversation a couple of days to get ago and it's brilliant to see him here. Um, Jane Fryer, who I've not seen for ages, Ted Yates, who I've not seen for ages, Walking into a room full of people that you've actually got a warm relationship with makes such a huge difference. Get involved in the conversation before you get to networking events. When you're at networking events, every big opportunity starts with a little conversation. All that I do at networking events is, is I set the bar very low. All that I'm looking to do is start conversations. I want to take the pressure off a lot of you, I think. A lot of people turn up to networking events and feel that they've got to achieve something there and then. Every big opportunity starts with a little conversation and actually those little conversations are really important. Turning up to networking events and just talking about the weather. Um, in, in, in my first conversations this morning, we've talked about the weather. I said to Nicola, what's the weather like in Abingdon? What am I going to wear tonight? Um, you know, that's the sort of little conversations that then lead somewhere. I'm going to talk about what we do after networking events in a minute. But I set the bar very low at networking events. All that I'm looking to do is, is either start conversations with new people 
or continue conversations that with people that I've met before. So the people in the room that I've already name checked and the other people in the room that, that I know, isn't it great that I've got this little opportunity this morning to continue that conversation with, with some of you that, that we've not actually seen each other for years, but now we're both reminded that each other exists. And in business, what are we constantly trying to do? We're constantly trying to remind people that we exist. I'm, I'm gonna to come to that in a second as well. I just want to talk really specifically about virtual networking events, just, just for a second. Um, if I was doing this presentation actually in front of you at an actual networking event, what I would be doing now is, is going around the room and getting eye contact with people because that's, you know, as a, a, a speaker, that's one of the things that I do. I get eye contact with people. Um, it, 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 it works. People like to feel the human connection of eye contact. But if I do it now, if I go and get eye contact with Jay Unwin, because I'm looking right at you right now, Jay, it looks to Jay and to everyone else in the room like I'm looking away from you. So when you're at a virtual networking event, when you're delivering your, your 60 or 40 second introduction, please make sure that you deliver it to the camera, because that's who I'm actually talking to at the moment. Even though we know it's false, it, it feels to you like I've got eye contact with you and we, we, we prefer that. The other couple of things that I do at, at virtual networking events is if you've got the opportunity to, to put a, a written version of your 60 or 40 seconds in the chat or put contact details in the chat, have it typed out ready to just copy and paste. I'm amazed the number of people who finish their 60 seconds at virtual networking events. And then the next thing you see for the next two minutes is them looking down doing this whilst they're typing stuff away. Have it written out already so that you can just copy and paste it. If you use Apple devices, and I am a bit of an Apple fanboy, um, I was 51 years old before I learned that I could write something on one Apple device, copy it, and it magically flies through the air and I can paste it on another Apple device. Um, so you don't have to be typing on your phone or anything like that. Have your contact details, your written version of your 60 or 40 seconds written and ready to copy and paste. And the next thing is specific to, to virtual networking events. Um, you're gonna recognize some of the names on here if you, if you look closely enough. I'm a huge fan of technology. And the most technological piece of, of kit that I take with me to networking events is my little notebook. Um, Simon Fisher's name right at the top there. So when I'm actually networking with people, what I do is, is write down their names in my little notebook so that I can follow up with them afterwards and continue the conversation with them afterwards. Connect on LinkedIn, for example. Um, I don't trust my memory completely. Um, I also know that, that everyone else is busy, so it's up to me to take responsibility for it. M more of that in a second, actually. But I use that technological piece of, of kit to make sure that whilst we're not swapping real business cards, I do at least remember who to follow up with. When you deliver your, your 60 or 40 second networking introduction, it's not an elevator pitch, by the way. Elevator pitch is a term that I dislike immensely. Um, I'm gonna tell you why as well. It, it, if, if you don't know what an elevator pitch is, I first heard this term sometime in the 1990s. And it was this idea that you got into an elevator and the only other person in the elevator was Donald Trump. That's who it was when I read it. Um, I'm gonna say Richard Branson. I think that's, that's marginally more appealing. You got into an elevator, the only other person in there was Richard Branson. You were just going up to the third floor. So you just had 60 seconds. So, you know, you've got your, your best potential client or your best potential investor in that small space with you. You've just got 60 seconds to tell them everything about your business. I've got two problems with the elevator pitch. The first one is we're, we're in the middle of England, for God's sake, it's called a lift. Do that joke on stage in Glasgow, by the way, and you don't get exactly the same reaction when you stand up and say, we're in England, it's called a lift. They don't like that. Um, my second problem with it is, if you were to really do that to Richard Branson, start sort of spewing all over him about your business, is he really going to get a checkbook out or is he going to press the lift button and press the security button and, and get out as soon as he can? 
Think about why everyone else is at the networking event that you're at. They're not there to buy from you. You you didn't show up this morning with the intention of buying from other people. That's not why people go to networking events. People go to networking events to promote their own stuff. So if all you do when you stand up and do your 60 seconds is start telling them all about everything that you do, you're not appealing to what they're actually there for. Remember that everyone else turned up for the sake of their business. When you deliver your 60 or 40 second introduction, all that you're looking to do is give them just enough that they want to find out more. What, what some of you know about me is that before this part of my career started in 2007, I was a, a, a full-time estate agent. I did that for about 20 years, 1988 through to 2007. When I first started going networking, it was as an estate agent here in Whitney. And we advertised in the Oxford Times every single week, every single week for 20 years. That was our biggest expense in, in whichever estate agency I worked for. But we didn't tell people every detail about every house that was for sale in the Oxford Times. Because what we wanted to do is give them just enough that they wanted to pick up the phone or come into our office. My career was, was mainly pre-internet, wanted to actually come into our office and ask for the details of the house. All that we wanted to do was use our advert to start a conversation. What I look to do at networking events is give people just enough that they want to find more, that they want to start that conversation. And then once the networking event has finished, I personally take responsibility for continuing that conversation. Here's what a load of people do. They, they want everyone else to remember them, but they give everyone else the job of remembering them. And guess what? Everyone else is busy. Everyone else has got their own stuff going on. They've got their own work going on. They've got their kids to, to homeschool or, you know, in, in our household, we've got three out of four of us all working from home. We have to juggle that and so on. Everyone else has got their own stuff, but you expect everyone else to remember you. If you drive along the Botley Road, this is great. I can do local gags at, at, at this gig. This is brilliant. Drive along the Botley Road and, and DFS are there. Um, I happen to know that. You're all familiar with, with DFS, I'm sure. When does their sale end? I usually get a better laugh. Well, no, I don't even usually get a better laugh for that. Um, no one knows when the DFS sale ends, but you're all familiar with DFS, the furniture store. You all know that they've got a sale on since about 1974, um, that they do interest-free credit, and you also know that they sell sofas. But if you happen to watch commercial television, what you'll notice is that DFS tonight, probably in between Coronation Street, the most expensive piece of real estate on TV, will tell you that they sell sofas and that they've got a sale on at the moment. The reason that DFS tell you that is that they need to be there at that moment when you start to think about buying a sofa. Because if I meet one of you at a networking event today, I might really love what you have to say. I just don't need it right now or we're budgeted out for whatever you do, or I need to convince my business partners, I don't need what you're selling right now. But then real life gets in the way, and even if I was really interested in what you're doing, that conversation with you starts to slip down my list of priorities. So in the nicest possible way, I forget. I forget to follow up with you. I forget to get in touch. Most people leave that responsibility to the other person. They leave the other person to remember to buy from them. Be a bit like DFS. Be constantly visible so that people can see you. I've already talked about Mike's activity on, on LinkedIn. I've talked about Kathy's activity on LinkedIn. Guess what? They put a load of stuff out there, a load of value, such as events like today, they put a load of value out there. So if every so often they post, this is what I've got for sale at the moment, I pay attention to that. I, I genuinely, genuinely do. Think about how you keep in touch with people after events like this. Connect with people, primarily on LinkedIn, Instagram as well. Um, little plug, if you and I aren't connected on LinkedIn, please go and find me and connect. I do put a load of networking advice out there, a load of videos like this and, and that sort of thing. But one of the reasons that I do that is that the more that I put value into my LinkedIn output, my Instagram outputs, the more that people look at what I'm doing. So if every so often an advert slips in there, people pay attention to it. Make sure that you're the one who's putting effort into keeping in touch with people. If you've got any questions, do 
that way. Do pop them in the chat, it's that way for me, and I'll, I'll answer them in, in the next few minutes before we finish. When you're, you're keeping in touch with people, remember this. I started my career back in 1983 at Manfield Shoes in Corn Market in Oxford, which is now Pandora. Actually, you'll, you'll know exactly where it is opposite Boswell's. I started my career in a shoe shop. If you go into any shoe shop or if you go into any fashion retailer and look up at the ceiling, there will be a sign that says pay here. They will tell you how to buy from them. If you go into Sainsbury's or, or, or Waitrose or wherever you happen to go, they make it really easy. You can't get out with walking past the till. The final thing in the time that I've got, make sure, please make sure that you aren't hiding the till. So many people go to all of this trouble of turning up to networking events, being there, telling people about who they are and what they do, but never actually show them the till, never actually show what they're selling. Please make sure that if you put the rest of this effort in, that you do occasionally or you are occasionally brave enough to wheel out your offer, what you've got going on at the moment. Put the effort in by all means, but please don't hide the till. Since my first experience in, in Whitney in November 2005 at, at Whitney Big Breakfast, I've done about 1,500 networking events. And what I've always loved about this environment is that in all of my career before that, I always got told that you just get one chance to make an impression. And, and what I've really loved about networking is that this was somewhere where I got a, a, a second chance along the way, or, or even today, a 1,500th chance to make an impression. I really appreciate the chance to speak here this morning. I really appreciate all of you taking some time to listen to me. Um, I hope to see some of you at 4.30 this afternoon. Thank you all very much for listening. Thank you. Super. Thank you, Stefan. Thanks for opening the show, as they say, um, as always. And uh, what a great way to share, to start the show with you sharing your tips. Has anybody got any burning question for Stefan, either um, in the chat or does anybody want to unmute and ask a, a question? I, I invite that sen sensitively, if, as you all unmute at once. But, um... I'm very happy to take I'll, questions. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask you a question, Stefan. So I, I walk into a room and there's a room of people and I, I know half the room quite well and there's some new people in the room. What, what do you think, where do you think my priorities would necessarily lie? Building existing relationships or finding some new ones? Uh, do you know what? I, I actually, I really, really try not to overthink this myself and I just let conversations flow. What I would say you're a host you're, you're a host of networking events so specifically directed to you if there are new people in the room then you're going to want to to go over and and connect with them and and chat to them what i would do personally if i was going into that sort of room is and, and the people in the breakout room with me this morning um have sort of spotted this i would go and try and um share host a conversation so get people talking about themselves that's that's what i i would do and and put people at their ease and i i will say this if you're familiar with the format of the networking event and you spot new people in the room you will win friends for life if you go over there and say hey or are you new here have you done this before has anyone explained the format to you because i was completely taken by surprise at my first ever networking event um I would have really appreciated it if, if someone had told me that. So I, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm just going to, I'm trying to read the chat and make sure that we're not missing any questions. before. There's, the... there's a great question from Catherine G. Cock, uh, Stefan, um, which I think is a good, great question for most of us. It's a bit linked. Is When we get back in person, what is the advice on how to join in a group of people already talking? So the first bit of advice, again, it's about overthinking, is that people at networking events are there to chat and I've never had anyone who's been offended by me joining in a conversation. Um, second piece of advice is to look for the open shapes. So if look at how you behave in a nightclub. Um, I'm sure some of you are young enough to remember going in nightclubs, but look at how people behave. If, if you're in conversation, if, if there's two people and you're in conversation and you don't want to be interrupted, you will face each other directly. 
if you're in a more casual conversation where you're welcome to other people coming in, you will form two sides of a triangle. You won't notice that you're doing it, but you'll form two sides of a triangle. So you're inviting someone to, to close the triangle off. If you're having an intimate conversation, then you'll, you'll tend to face each other. So if you want to look for the open shapes, two people will face each other. Um, I've got some other great questions here as well. Um, two people will face each other if they don't want to be interrupted, but lots of networking groups will stand and leave part of the shape open. Look out for that or bowl up to someone and say, I'm, I'm new here, do you mind if I join you? Um, genuinely, it's, it's no one has ever at a networking event when greeted with that at a smile said, actually, no, we, we don't want to talk to you. So Catherine, I, I hope that that helps, but look for open shapes. Um, Andrew at Brand Asylum, um, how do you get over imposter syndrome when you walk into a room when you, you don't know anyone? Yeah, tell me about it. It's, it's something that, that continues to, to, to happen. Um, I get this all the time. I walk into a, a lot of, of rooms full of people. The piece of advice that I would give you, Andrew, is connect with people online first. OK, so try and work out who's going to the event. So Mike has been promoting this event all over the place. People who are going have been commenting, oh, I'll see you there and so on. So it's been quite easy to, to, to spot who's coming. Connect with people in advance and get chatting to them so that when you go, you can walk up to the people who you already know. And oh, hi, um, I'm Andrew. We've, we've been chatting online. That's how I handle it. It's a bit of a bigger subject than we've got time for in the morning. Um, there's loads of advice about how to deal with imposter syndrome, but everyone gets it. Um, you may think that you're the least confident person in the room. That's definitely what I would 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 used to think um, and sometimes still do, but it's not true. Everyone else is feeling the same as you. Um, Super. Thank you, Super. thank you. I, I know you've got Super. other speakers. Super, Stefan, thank you very much. If we could you're give uh, Stefan a virtual round of applause as our keynote to kick off. Thank you very much, Stefan. As I say, um, great to have you with us as a, a local person, but obviously the networking guru. Um, don't forget that networking for dummies. I'm not calling you all dummies, but a great resource if you are, want to read up on that. Thanks again, Stefan. Thanks for joining us. I know you're going to be hanging around a little bit and we'll see you a little bit later at Aberdeen. Beers on me. Um, and um, any questions? Uh, sorry, we didn't get to it. The very last question was there, but uh, please do. So we are now going to go into our first optional um, speaker session. So you've got a choice of three speakers. Um, what you will find is that when I open the breakout rooms, there will be three breakout rooms. One named Erin uh, Rudman Hawkins uh, from Evergreen, who's going to be talking about how to capitalise on the post-pandemic digital world. Another one that's going to be called Jane Fright from Face to Face HR. She's going to be talking about you've hit that milestone. How do you get your first employee without peeing your pants? And Darren Aston from Aston and James is going to be talking about the new way of working. With the new Zoom update, as I said earlier, you should be able to choose which room you want to go into. You can jump in between rooms. Um, if you haven't got the latest Zoom update, stick around and me and Ben will put you into your room of choice. Um, so this is going to be on for the next 20 minutes. Enjoy your choices of uh, breakouts. And thanks again, Stefan. <laughs>